Okay, welcome to the class bivalva uh, video. Then we're also going to cover scaphopods at the end of this. So two classes. Um, we'll start with bivalves. They have two shells. So you'll be familiar with these things. Pippies, mussels, cockles, scallops. They have two bivalves shells. Okay. All right. Uh, their shell, they will have calcium carbonate shells, which we've seen uh, before and so they have two shells and a ligament that holds them together a hinge ligament which is the black lining that um, where the two shells come together you'll see an adductor muscle which is and they may have one they may have two they may have four anyway they, these are those uh, muscles that uh, hold the shell closed when they want to squeeze closed and you'll be familiar with it as the white part in a scallop or a mussel okay and then they have pedal retractor muscles uh, with which withdraws the muscular foot okay they're still mollusks so they have a muscular foot a mantle and a visceral mass and the pedal retract retractor muscle in things like tua tua which have uh, a digging foot it's to withdraw it into the shell. All right, so here is the posterior adductor muscle sh scar. Here is the anterior adductor muscle scar. So these ones have two adductor muscles. Here will be your hinge ligament, which is going to be like generally dark colored, black. Um, and then you'll have, what else do you need to know? These little teeth you'll recognize. All right, so those are some of the features that you'll need to know on this valve. Uh, they are bilaterally symmetrical with laterally compressed body, um, which is uh, more visible in the um, in the larval stages. Uh, very within, they only have a head in the larval stage. And the tro uh, it's more like a trochophore that's uh, with a very poorly developed head. And they have uh, large gills, and we'll see why they're so large, because um, since they're used for feeding uh, later on in this video, and they also don't have a radula. So bipectinate gills, we remember, are the ones that are sort of feather-shaped with, um, with a gill filament on both sides. Uh, they've developed into filter feeding gills. Okay. And lamella branch means sheet gill. So a lamella is a sheet. Okay. And so when these things were able to um, uh, sit and filter feed and not have to go to where their food were, and also um, settle into so soft sediments. They were, they um, exploded in in terms of uh, numbers of species, and all they pretty much have uh, inhabit most parts of the ocean now. Here is something that we're um, familiar with a uh, an oyster, okay. And here are the lamellibranch gills, okay. You can see how they. At, they look like sheets, sheets lying on top of each other. Um, all right, you see the mantle, which, as we've said in other videos, follows the outline of the shell. Okay, and let's have a look at the structure of these sheet gills. So, if we look at them, uh, what happens is that the water will come in on one side and pass through the gills and go out um, from the other side of the gills. And there are lots of little cilia that um, beat that cause the water to move across the gill. And also they trap particles and move those particles down the gill to like a conveyor belt to the food groove. And then the food groove uh, is transports those particles by ciliary action um, to the mouth. So we'll see um, cilia moving food down the lamellibranch gills. So it acts as a gill and also a filter feeding device. 
uh, we'll show some videos in class. So here we go. If we look back at our oyster, the gills will move the food down. I'll go all the way along the the bottom, the food groove. Okay, and they go. So by ciliary action, the um, particles that are caught move down to the food groove, and then along the food groove, all the way to these things called the labial palps which are, they um, sort the food into what could be considered edible and what's not very, not edible, like sediment particles that aren't, have no nutrition. And then, so that's transported to the mouth and then into the, um, into the intestinal system. And then out the other side goes the water. And so these things just sit and filter feed um, all and very rarely move. Okay, they sit and filter feed in one place. And those ones are actually attached, but not all of them are attached. Some of them will sit on the surface like scallops and they can swim a little bit. Others attach themselves with, um, okay, so there's, they can be cemented like the oyster that we saw. They can uh, be attached by bissel threads, or they may even bore into the substrate um, chemically in order to have a place to stay. So bissel threads, like we saw, this is the uh, little beard in a muscle, right? Okay, and you'll be familiar with those. All right, the one, some of them that are burrowing in soft sediment, like this uh, cockle has a foot that you know is the bit that the the tongue that sticks out when you pull up a, a tua tua or a cockle or a pippi or something like that there'll be the little tongue that sticks out and that anchors it into the sand they can burrow down they can dig down into the sand with that so where the there were the three modes they can sit on the surface like a scallop they can attach themselves by bissel threads or they can cement themselves or bore into the into the substrate. Okay, uh, in terms of reproduction, most of them are dioecious, which we know means two sexes, and they usually broadcast spawn. Obviously, um, they can't copulate since they don't move around. And uh, fertilization external with broadca broadcasting, of course, uh, and then planktonic larval stage, and then they they settle onto um, suitable substrate. Now that will be all for the bivalves and we'll now move on to the um, the next class which is Scaphopoda. Okay, tusk or tooth shells. Uh, these ones burrow. They've got um, a shell that's a bit like a uh, a cone, like an ice cream cone or uh, maybe a little narrower than an ice cream cone, but it is a cone, and they're open at both ends. They um, are sediment feeders, and they look a bit like this. So they've got these sort of tentacles, which are modified from the tube foot. Here we go. Not tube foot, sorry, the muscular foot. And they um, pick up particulate matter in the in the soft sediment. They've got a ventilating current that goes through the shell and um, and ventilates out at the uh, at the top. So that is an opening at the top, and they they tend to look a bit like a tusk, like an elephant's tusk. So they are that's why they were called tusk shells. They're a little bit curved. Here's one, and here's another one. You will find these on west coast beaches uh, quite commonly not very often on east coast beaches places like coffee harbor or these uh, quite a lot of these and here is that uh um, 400 year old necklace that was um an artifact fact uh was um, used in maori jewelry made from tusk shells okay they feed with uh, little tentacles as we saw before and they eat interstitial organisms. 
interstitial means between the sand grains. So very small organisms that they um, grind up with a radula. Uh, mantle surface used for gas exchange, much like we saw in the Amphibola crenata, the land snails. Um, and they are dioecious, okay? They uh, broadcast spawn and they have a trochophore and villager larva that settle as we've seen in many of the other mollusks. All right, um, this is a generalized picture of a scaphopod, okay? And you'll see that it's still got a mantle, it's still got a visceral mass in here, and it's still got a muscular foot. Okay, that is it for scaphopods and bivalvia.